But uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Barry Stiefel, and uh, thanks for logging on to our uh, virtual enrichment series uh, event tonight, which is uh, on uh, iPhones. A um, couple of things, as a number of you will remember, we had uh, conducted uh, several, as, a, as the tech club, had conducted several uh, of these sessions live in the past. And basically what I was doing is mirroring my phone up to that big TV screen. Uh, obviously, I can't do that tonight. So uh, I jerry-rigged a, uh, a system that uh, may or may not work. Uh, hopefully, it does work. It worked before we tried this. So so who knows? But uh, in any event, I uh, wanted to begin just by welcoming everybody and also letting you know that uh, what had been the tech club um, uh, basically grew and I would say morphed into uh, a PCA committee, uh, the tech committee. The chairman is Susan Bees. Uh, I'm a member, Mike Palmer, uh, Mike Yakubovich, Jay Richmond and Diep Levu are members. We are looking for a seventh member. So if you're interested in, uh, in joining, uh, you feel that you have something from a technical aspect to, uh, to offer, uh, please get uh, in touch with Jay Richmond. Uh, we formed the tech club, uh, tech committee rather, to basically uh, address uh, the, the peninsula uh, and the growing uh, world of technology as it affects the residents here in the peninsula. Uh, so we're going to work with uh, on an individual basis to help uh, uh, residents. And we're also working on uh, helping the peninsula itself with their infrastructure. Mike Palmer is actually, I think you're gonna find uh, uh, fairly soon that when you go up to the clubhouse or the pool area that you will finally be able to actually uh, surf the web. Um, he's working on uh, uh, increasing, you know, improving the, uh, the, among other things, the Wi-Fi connection. Uh, I also am going to mention that the Diep Levu has put in an amazing amount of work on what we in the committee are really excited about. We are going uh, soon to launch a tech forum, a Peninsula Tech Forum. We've got our own dedicated website. Uh, basically, this forum will be for Peninsula members, residents only. It's going to be a collective a portal where questions will be asked and answered. Uh, the forum will be for anyone and everyone. Uh, you will get an invite. You have to be invited to, uh, to basically, uh, uh, and every Peninsula resident will be invited to join. Uh, it's going to be a really nice atmosphere for you to, um, uh, to basically pose questions, uh, pose topics if you don't see a topic. Uh, it, it's um, uh, no politics, just technology, which in this day and age is uh, uh, very, very well. So with... Um, uh, with uh, that said, let, uh, let's begin uh, tonight with 20 or so, depending on the time, uh, uh, tips and tricks uh, that uh, maybe some of you know about and many of you might not know about, but uh, that I think you will all find uh, to be hopefully worthwhile. So... I will start by hopefully you'll be able to see my phone shortly. Uh, okay, can everybody see? Good. This is my iPhone. Looks like any other iPhone. The first thing we're gonna, I'm going to start with is uh, edits. And a couple of things that, uh, uh, the, the tips and tricks with respect to edits. I'm gonna start, um, from an email perspective. So these are things you could do. You could do edits on any docs, but these are edits I'm gonna show it to you. Easiest way is, uh, uh, is if I was doing a, an email. The first, I'm gonna show you two very simple edits. These are tricks that most of you who were in the past uh, sessions saw me do, 
Uh, maybe you've forgotten about them. Hopefully you're using them. But those that uh, haven't seen them, uh, you'll, uh, I, I think you'll find these great. The first is you see the cursor, okay? And a lot of times you're trying to move that cursor by your finger. You're trying to put it in between. I, oh, I want to get it over to, to this M over here. Or I want to put, or I made a mistake. I want to move it over here. Well, the easiest way to move the cursor is you take the space bar at the bottom, press and hold it. You see how it's disappeared? And now you just slide that, that cursor anywhere on the screen, up, down, around. So now I can put it right there in between. I want to put it right over here. And there it is. So what you do is you press and hold the space bar. Okay? Pretty simple. Okay. So I'm typing here. Um, and I get to the end of a sentence and I want to put a period. But look at the uh, look at the key, the keyboard. The period's not there. So what do I have to do? I have to go and I have to hit the M number and then I have to do that. Well, there is a quicker and simpler way and that is a double tap on the space bar puts a period after a sentence. So very quick, very simple. Double tap on the space bar for a period, press and hold the space bar um, that will allow you to move the cursor, okay? Now, the next thing I wanna uh, mention is, it, I really like this. Uh, some people will, some people won't, but it's called slide typing. Essentially, you're gonna to go to general, okay, settings actually, and I apologize, settings. You hit general, you come over to keyboard, and then you will see down here, um, you'll see slide to type, okay? Um, and you're going to uh, tap on that, to, uh, uh, to basically enable slide the type. Okay, what does that do? Well, let's come back to this in a minute. Okay, slide the type basically is this. Uh, welcome to the iPhone. Uh, well, that's a joint. Okay, that made a mistake there, but I P H O N E iPhone, uh, S E S S I N N session. You got to practice it. I use my thumb basically to do this. But once you do, uh, I think you'll find this to be a very easy and uh, a pretty cool way of typing without moving, you know, without lifting your fingers. It is also unbelievably intuitive. Uh, Sometimes it amazes me as I'm swiping, I'm going, ah, it's never going to recognize, you know, what I put in there. And it actually does because it looks at the words you put in and it uses artificial intelligence to sort of guess what may come next. So that's called slide to type. Uh, just a little uh, a trick. And as I say, it's worth enabling this and it's worth playing around with it. You may not use it uh, uh, for everything you do, but for quick little, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, typing or edits, uh, it, it's uh, it's very cool. Okay, now next with uh, iOS 13 and 14, um, Apple introduced uh, uh, a number of keyboard uh, uh, tools and uh, and formatting. And so what I mean by that is come down, you're gonna see the arrow uh, pointing, uh, you see under sent from my iPhone, you see the suggested words, and then you see this arrow. So I'm gonna tap on that arrow and that opens up a, a, um, a, a bar of tools that you can utilize um, uh, in uh, constructing this email or constructing a document. So the first is I'm gonna type on the AA. That opens up the entire formatting. So what can you do? Well, this is where you can bold something. You can italicize, underline, strike through. 
you can choose uh, you can choose other there's default fonts but you can choose your own fonts uh, just as you would if you were using uh, word uh, you know or any uh, um, document uh, uh, construction you can also uh, um, you can set colors over uh, to the right uh, you can bullet point as you can see below default font you'll see indents and uh, ability to um, uh, to bold, I mean, to bullet point, okay? So we're gonna come out of that and I'm gonna go back here. And what's the next tool? Well, the next tool is it allows you to immediately go through your, your photos. You hit a photo and it will insert the photo into the email uh, very easily. You don't have to close, you know, you don't have to go to photos and then go back. Um, the next shows a camera. It's exactly what it is. Allows you to take a photo and that photo will be immediately inserted into the email. The next bar is um, essentially, this would allow you to go to files and attach a files or an attachment to the email again, without having to close that email. The next, the last one uh, is, um, Actually, this, uh, no, uh, that's not what I wanted to do here, sorry. Um, come back to this email and I'm gonna cancel. The last one is markup. This allows you, as you can see, you can use a stylus or you can use your finger, but this allows you to draw, uh, to mark up um, uh, anything in that email. Again, just as you would, uh, if you had, if you were using Word or, or uh, uh, any of the PDF tools. This is something fairly new in, in, uh, uh, in Apple, and it really gives you uh, some pretty cool ways of, uh, uh, generally your emails might, you know, might be, you know, quick and uh, you don't care, but sometimes you want to write an email from the phone that uh, you would like to have it come out looking, you know, <laughs> as if, uh, you know, it was a, a more formal document. This is the way to do it, okay? Uh, so those are edits. Um, the next thing I'm going to, uh, 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 to uh, uh, tell you about, next trick, the app library and folder. I'll save the app library for uh, um, you know second. I'm going to deal with folders first. I've talked about folders for a long, long time, uh, and I've talked about them in the context of uh, those of you that have uh, more than two pages of um, of uh, apps. Those of you that have more than three, and I know you're out there. So uh, let me get a hand here. Uh, how many people have more than three pages of apps? Raise your hand. Come on, be honest. Be honest. There you go. Uh, how many of you are a four or five page user? Come on. I know you're out there. Uh, don't be embarrassed. I can't see you anyway. But yes. Well, that's absolutely absurd. You've got five pages, even three pages of apps. How long does it take you to find an app that that you know uh, that that you use uh, that may be on the fourth page? in the middle of the page and you're constantly going, okay, well, you know, where is that app? Well, one way to organize that was to use folders. And you can see that I have folders uh, on, my, uh, on my phone here. So I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna open up the one that says music. So in music, I've got everything that I consider to be my music apps and I moved them into this folder. I basically created it. Okay, uh, if you've never worked with folders before, the way you basically move something into a folder is, I'm gonna come here on this Delaware mobile ID app, which I'm gonna uh, mention uh, uh, in a little while. And I wanna move it into um, the folder uh, for utilities, okay? Uh, utilities is up here. I've opened that up, I'm gonna close it here. So how would I do that? What you do is you, you basically, whoops, let me close that. You press and hold, um, press and hold this, okay? Till you get a context screen and everything is shaking. So you press and hold, 
Okay. And then once everything is shaking, you move that app to the folder uh, that you want it to go into. So there it opened up. Uh, and now I just drop that thing into utilities. If I want to move it out, I do the same thing. I press and hold the app. I move it out of the folder and I move it back onto the uh, desktop. Folders uh, are, again, a great way of organizing your apps. And I'm going to give you a great example that uh, I, um, I owe this to uh, one of our new residents who basically said, you know, there are, I, I just moved here and we've got all these apps here. You know, I've got a Fortis app. I've got a Dwelling Live app. I, uh, you, you know, there, there's, um, uh, there's a Town Square app. Um, how do I, you know, uh, uh, how do I keep track of all of this? Well, <clears throat> the communication committee and tech committees are working on actually trying to develop a uh, portal that uh, you could go to uh, that eventually will host these disseparate apps. Um, but in the meantime, what can you do? Well, look at my screen and you will see over to the right at the bottom, pen apps. Well, that stands for Peninsula app. I'm going to hit that. What have I done? Well, I put the dwelling live. I put town square. I put club central into that folder. So I've got all of the apps that, um, uh, that uh, are, are specific to, um, uh, to the peninsula, except for one, which I'm going to get to in a moment, you'll notice in the middle, PCA. Well, that's our PCA form. Um, and uh, you'll, again, you'll be able to do, to do that. So uh, those are, that's folders and creating a folder. Uh, but I'm also going to show you a little trick here um, that uh, uh, you can create, I call them mini apps, but they're really bookmarks that uh, from websites that you use a lot that uh, you can turn into, again, almost mini apps. So let me show you. We're going to come back. I'm going to open up Safari. Okay. And I'm going to open up here um, the... Uh, uh, I had gone to Brightview. Everybody, if you've registered with Brightview, you would have basically this, um, uh, you know, this, uh, um, uh, this is the page that it would take you to, okay? So Brightview is another Peninsula-related, uh, uh, you could call it an app, but Peninsula-related, uh, uh, you know, um, site. Uh, but, you know, uh, so I want to log in here, you know, and I have to log into Brightview, I have to go to, to Safari, or I have to go to Chrome to get it. Well, let me show you something. You can do this with any web page that you use quite a bit. Go down to the bottom, and you're going to see that square with an arrow. Uh, uh, that we're going to come back to uh, on a number of occasions because it allows you to do so many things. Uh, it opens up a content menu. Now, I will scroll, and it's going to say, um, uh, as you look here, add to home screen. I'm going to hit that. And I'm going to go up to the right and I'm going to say add the home screen. Okay, let me close this out. And guess what? Look what I've added. Down at the bottom, I've added the peninsula right here. I can hit on it. I've just opened it up. And I've opened it up not from opening Safari. Okay, uh, I've opened it up because I have it now as sort of a mini app. You can do this with any web page that you use a lot. Now that I've done that, I want to move that into my pen apps because it's a pen related app. So I move, I hold, okay, edit bookmarks, they're moving. I'm going to move it into the pen app folder, and there I go. By the way, um, I know we're moving, I'm trying to move kind of quickly. Uh, I will, we will have, and we will post uh, 
uh, a um, uh, basically a, a folder or a uh, a hard copy of a lot of the things that I'm doing tonight. So you'll be able to reference that. Um, okay. Hey, yes. Just uh, real, real quick related. Uh, so question, how do you actually create the folder? You create the folder, that's a great question. Um, why didn't I think of that? Okay, the way you can create a folder is you take two apps, okay, that you want to move into a folder, okay? Uh, and what you're gonna do, I'm gonna do this even though these are totally unrelated. Um, let me go here. Uh, okay, I'm going to take this Hey app, which is a messaging app, and my MLB app, and let's say that I wanted to join them together, that they're related, okay? I press and hold, okay? I do the uh, edit screen, okay? Now that they're shaking, I press, and then I move this one app on top of the other, and once I do that, I've created a folder. Now, this is called productivity, but you can hit that X and you can type in any, anything you want in, uh, as a name of that folder. So basically you take a separate app that you want to combine with another app to create a folder. You move one of those apps on top of the other, hold it there and the folder is automatically created. I'm gonna hit done. Uh, I'll leave that as productivity for right now. And there it is. So I've created a folder. Okay. Many of you, I am going to assume, uh, after the iOS 14 update, um, you saw this, this thing, the app library. How many of you know what that is and what the hell it does? Excuse my life. A lot of people don't, okay? And, and I don't blame you, okay? Uh, what is it? it? Well, it shows all these apps and it has a lot of folders uh, uh, and stuff, but what does it do? Well, basically what the app library was created to do was to help clean up uh, your desktop. Um, what it does is basically every single app that you have on your phone was put into one of these folders in the library. But don't worry about the folders. You'll never ever access apps from those folders. What you're going to do essentially is what it allows you to do is you've got a bunch of apps on your phone that you don't want to delete, but you hardly ever use, but you don't want to delete them because maybe once in a blue moon, you might use it. So what it would allow you to do is something like this, okay? Um, I want to move news. Uh, I hardly ever use it. Uh, and, I, and I've got, uh, you know, 100 apps on here. Uh, that I want to, uh, that, that I'll, well, you know what? I use news, so I'm going to go to something in one of my folders here. Um, let's see, uh, media, okay? Um, I'll do um, this uh, smart news right down at the bottom. Okay, I want to get that out of here. Uh, I don't want to delete it though. So what I do is I press and hold and the menu comes up, okay? Press and hold again. I want to get that context menu up, and I apologize. Uh, let me go back here. Um, and uh, where did I have? Um, now I've lost that. Um, best laid plans. There we go. Okay. Um, you see, uh, let me open this up again, and I'm going to press and hold, and then you see on this context menu, remove app at the top. So I'm gonna hit that. It's going to give me a choice. I can delete the app or I can remove it from the home screen, which I'm gonna do. What that does is it moves the app into the app library uh, and off of the screen. So this is one great way of cleaning up your home screen and still keeping your app.
Now, you, you ask, well, how can I find that app? You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's in uh, all these other apps. Well, uh, glad you asked. You see at the top where it says app library and it has the search bar, tap on that. And every single app you have on your phone is listed in alphabetical order right here. You can just scroll down. But to make it quick, really all you need to do is go up here and type um, uh, maybe the first three letters. I want to open up Amazon. Okay. Well, um, uh, it pulls up it pulls up anything. Okay, Amazon. Uh, uh, and so it's pulling up apps that I had that were Amazon the AMA. Uh, I want to uh, open up uh, news. Uh, I'll type NEW and there's news. Uh, this is a really fast way of finding apps on your phone. It's a fast way, you know, for those of you that uh, love the 30 pages of, uh, of apps uh, and, uh, you know, don't want to get rid of that setup but would like to find your apps much quicker than scrolling through those 30 pages, go to the app library, tap up here, and either scroll or tap in the, uh, uh, the app name, okay? That's what the app library is. So you saw that uh, in that uh, update and you wondered what it is. Uh, I think it's a really uh, um, a welcome tool. Okay, we're gonna move on now to a couple of my favorite features. Um, I, I call these control features. And the first one we're gonna do is called back tap. This was something introduced in iOS 14 that I think is, is pretty cool. You're gonna go to settings and you're gonna scroll down here to accessibility, okay? And then you're going to go to touch and you're going to tap on touch under physical and motion and motor. And then you scroll down to the very bottom and you go to back tap. I have it on. Now you will notice that you will see double tap, triple tap. Okay, let's look at double tap. Now I have magnifier there. Okay. What that does is when I, I, I'm going to open this up, these are the choices I have. I can assign any of these activities in the system, uh, actions, or, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, or accessibility or scroll features or shortcuts to a double tap. I assigned the magnifier. Now, when you do this, I, I should say, if you have a case on your phone, sometimes you have to do it a couple of times. But as you know, uh, and I showed you, I have the magnifier assigned to the double tap. So I'm going to double tap. And again, you kind of have to do this a couple of times if you have a case, which I do. And of course, best kit laid plans, it isn't going to work right now. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, it generally does work. But uh, let me come out of that and see. Um, there we go. Okay, the magnifier open. Uh, if you didn't know it, uh, I'm going to tell you now that you do have a magnifying feature on the phone. Here it is. This allows you to lay over anything, or you know, on uh, and magnify. Uh, something that uh, it could be, you know, it could be text. It could be something, again, very small. You're trying to find that needle in a haystack. This is the magnifier. Okay. Now, let's go back here. I want to show you um, uh, there is triple tap. Uh, so um, I am so back to. Um, uh, accessibility um, and uh, touch and um, backpack. Okay, I have screenshot assigned to triple tap. Um, let's see.
And let's see here. And again, this is, I find this, usually it will work. Uh, obviously it isn't gonna work tonight because I want it to work. Okay, well, it isn't, but it usually does. You have to believe me, okay? Um, it is, uh, as I say, it depends on the thickness of your case. Uh, uh, this usually, let me see again, I'll try this, but there we go. Um, it's usually easier than that. Okay, it took a screenshot. Um, you can also assign action, such as, let's go back here to accessibility. I'm gonna get rid of this. Uh, I'm gonna delete that. Okay, accessibility, uh, touch, um, back tap, and I'm gonna assign uh, uh, double tap to, let's come down here. Um, oh, uh, call Karen. I think, I think there's a Karen one and a Karen. I hope that they're the same Karen, but uh, call Karen. So now things work and I should be able to, uh, and it should make the call. And of course it isn't, but it does. Uh, again, this is one of those things, please trust me, this works a lot better um, than it is working right now. Uh, and again, that's because I'm trying to demo it. And nothing ever works when you try to demo it, right? Okay, so that is back tap. It is very cool. I know it doesn't appear to be, uh, but it actually really does work. The other control feature that I want to tell you about is maybe I think the coolest feature most people don't know about on the iPhone and it's called voice control. So how do you de how do you access voice control? Well, you go back to in settings to accessibility, tap on that. And then you're going to um, come down uh, and you're going to scroll down to voice control. Okay, now I have it off. Now I'm going to turn voice control on, tap on. This is something that you have to play with, um, you know, to, to get better at. But once you do, you're gonna find this absolutely amazing. So you go down, I want you to go down to customize command and open that up. You're gonna see uh, that uh, you have a number of categories here, basic navigation, um, uh, overlays, which you'll never use, basic gestures, uh, which you might use, um, uh, advanced gestures, you won't, but dictation, okay? You, your dictation, you wanna add dictation. Uh, you wanna make sure that all these are on. You can tap them on or off. Same thing with text navigation and text selection, okay? So once you have that on, um, uh, you know, you have voice control on, uh, basic navigation, okay? I want to uh, open uh, the control center. So I just go uh, open control center. <laughs> open control center. Uh, this is too funny. There we go. Um, you can assign, as I showed you, you can assign uh, uh, or not even have to assign, just tune out, uh, uh, turn on any number of, uh, of features that you can control with your voice. Now, let's do the dictation. Um, and let me go to, I'm going to open an email. It could be anything, okay? Um, and I'm going to, uh, let me delete all of this here for you. And uh, let's see, okay. So the dictation on, uh, on this, on the um, voice control is really 
amazing. It's much better than the normal voice uh, dictation. And you don't have to have uh, uh, normal voice uh, uh, dictation. And as you see, it's dictating, it's almost uh, dictating what I'm saying right here, which is kind of funny. Um, let me come down here. This is, uh, it's actually, big. as you can see how good it is, it's dictated what I've said. Um, and select all, delete. Okay, I got rid of it. So um, let's see. I'm going to start off here. C spot run, but not on the golf course. Next paragraph. See Dick and Jane walk spot, making sure to pick up his poop. It's really amazing. Okay. Delete last sentence. We'll move here. Select all. Delete. I've just used a small number of, um, of, of things you can do. Uh, you've got to play around with it. But once you do, voice control is, is really absolutely amazing. So uh, I want to turn off voice control. Turn off voice control. Okay. Um, it's pretty much as simple as that. Once you do that, and again, let me let me um, uh, go over that again. You're going to go to accessibility. You're going to go to um, uh, voice control. Okay, not voiceover. It's voice control. Uh, you're going to make sure that it's on. You're going to go to customize commands, and then look through here and see what are the things you can do. And then you've kind of got to practice. Uh, but once you do you're gonna find that this is absolute, I mean, what it can do and how you, you essentially could, if you wanted to, control your phone with really out ever touching any of the, uh, um, uh, any of the uh, apps. Uh, let me show you something else here. Um, remember we were doing long press, that's called a long press where you touch and hold. So what if I do this, long press messages, And long press messages. Of course, nothing works when you want it to work. But basically, uh, it would, yeah, there we go. Okay, let's see, uh, long press app store. I did that without touching. Okay, not that you need to do that, but these are some of the commands that, uh, uh, you know, that you can use for voice control. And again, this is one of those things, it is useful. Uh, you really, again, want to uh, uh, practice with it. And once you do, um, you know, sometimes you'll use it, sometimes you won't. Um, sometimes, you know, you'll keep it on, uh, uh, you know, continuously. I'm gonna turn it off right now. Uh, and we are now done with voice control. Did you know that there is a level and a measurement uh, app uh, that was um, included with, uh, uh, with your iPhone? Uh, maybe you didn't, uh, but I'm gonna show you what that app is. So I'm gonna go to the library and I wanna find it. And, and there we go, and you see measure. I'm gonna open that up. Now, I wanna use the level. So I tap level at the bottom. Then what I do is I put the phone down. I've now got it on my desk, okay? It's showing me that this is a level surface. You see zero in green. But let's say that it was just a little bit off. It goes to black and it shows you the degree. This, I can tell you, I've used this and I've measured it against an actual level and it is absolutely flat out accurate. You just place the phone on its edge, kind of like this, and uh, on any surface, and you've got an instant level without having to go run and get a level. Okay, the other feature, measure. 
This is going to be a little tougher for me to do because I can't stretch my phone. I've got it attached to the uh, um, to my Mac, but I want to measure uh, this piece right over here. Uh, I hit measure, and you'll see if you can see it. I've got uh, that little circle and a dot. What you want to do, and this is going to be a little difficult again to uh, uh, to do. Uh, because I can't get closer, uh, but um, let me get that again and uh, see if I can get this over here clear. You're going to see the dot. Um, there it is. And you want to place it, okay, a place point, and I'm going to hit plus. Okay, then it's going to allow me, once I do that and hit plus, it's going to allow me to move that uh, across for a measurement, which again is a little tough right now because I need to be a little bit closer to this in order to get this. Uh, uh, let's see, place the point. Um, and uh, there's that dot there. And you drag, essentially, you drag, there we go. So I've got that point right there. And what I would do is I would drag my phone across, which would give me a measurement. Um, that wasn't a very good one. Um, and again, this is tough. Uh, but when you try it, you'll see that you can get that point. You set the point on a particular edge uh, of the object that you want to, uh, to measure. Um, and uh, let's see here, uh, I'll try it one more time, uh, but it doesn't, yeah, I need to be, as I say, just a little bit closer to be able to do this. Um, it takes a little practice. Um, once you do, um, let's see, maybe I can measure my Mac too. Um, there we go. Uh, no. uh, you, um, once you have this down, and it isn't hard, and you can see that circle, okay, with the dot. Once you have that down and you uh, uh, have it on the edge and you move your phone this way, that way, up or down, it gives you the measurement. It then allows you to take a picture of that measurement um, that, uh, uh, so that you have the object along with its, uh, you know, with its measurements, okay? Um, again, I wish I could show you in a perfect world, but, uh, since this uh, phone is a little bit tethered to the Mac, uh, wasn't able to get as close. Anyway, that's the measurement app, um, the measurement and level app, okay? Um, let's move on. Uh, we're gonna go now to, uh, okay. Uh, you, I'm gonna open up Safari here and, um, uh, there are times when you uh, pull up a web page and it's a long web page and you'd like to take a screenshot of it to save it. But uh, if you take a, a typical screenshot, you're only going to get exactly what is in the screen. But you want to really save all of what was on that page. Um, essentially, what you can do is. Um, uh, is go into, uh, you know, is, is go into to, uh, Safari and you go, come up here. Okay. Uh, actually, it's down here. And you can hit a uh, full hit, you know, web page. Um, full markup here on, uh, you could hit copy. It's going to take and take a screenshot, allowing you to basically. If I come back here, I think I've saved this one um, before. Um, let's see, uh, where did I move it to? Um, I, uh, I moved it, I apologize. Let me come back here to Safari. Uh, this would allow you essentially, to, as I say, to take a screenshot and save the entire, um, the entire page, every bit of it. By the way, now that I have this up, I should mention, Delaware is one of the only states in the country, I 
think there are maybe only five right now that have approved um, the use of mobile IDs. And they actually have an app for that. There is an app, an Apple app that you can download. It allows you to essentially scan your ID, your driver's license. It puts it into a mobile and digital format, which allows you to use that. And more, basically more and more governmental, more and more businesses are uh, being urged to accept this uh, ID in place of, okay, I needed to show I didn't have my driver's license or ID, but I can use this uh, uh, official app. So it's worth taking a look at this. It's called DMV. You go to dmv.de.gov um, to, uh, to uh, take a look at that. And I, I, you know, I basically say to everybody, go ahead and download that uh, Apple app for that. Um, okay. Uh, let's go to, uh, silence unknown calls. Okay. With, in this day and age of spam calls, uh, driving us completely and totally bananas. Um, this is a setting that you can utilize if you want. And what it does, we're going to go to, um, Settings, go to settings, scroll down to phone, okay? And you're gonna scroll to um, uh, silence unknown callers. Now I have it off, but I'm going to, to uh, uh, turn it on. And as you'll notice, what it does is it's gonna silence calls from unknown callers that are not on your contacts list or that are not on the outgoing call list. It won't, uh, it basically, it's not gonna avoid the call. It'll, it'll send the, the call immediately to voicemail, but it won't ring. Some of you may want, uh, um, you know, maybe uh, a little uh, reticent to use that uh, uh, to, you know, because it will silence a call that is not on your contacts list or an outgoing calls. But uh, if you don't mind those two you know, uh, aspects of it, it really is a nice feature uh, to avoid those spam calls in this crazy day and age of spam calls. Um, okay, uh, let's see. The, um, uh, next, I am going to show you uh, Included with iOS 13, I believe it started, uh, Apple included an app called Files. And what this app does is it really makes your iPhone or iPad very computer-like because what it does is it allows you to store uh, any of the um, uh, it, uh, of the documents that you may have saved to your iCloud drive uh, between all of your devices uh, onto your phone for easy access. Now you see desktop. For those of you that have a Mac, my desktop right here, if I hit it, that is everything on my Mac's desktop. Every single file, uh, um, you know, that, that I have right now uh, saved to my desktop drive that I could access, okay? It's like being in front of my computer, my Mac, or being remotely connected, except I'm not re remotely connected. Um, if you have Dropbox or any other cloud service or even Google, uh, you can actually attach those. As you can see, I can use iCloud Drive, I can use Dropbox, uh, I can use Google Drive, uh, it will consolidate these into this particular files app. Um, it's well worth looking at this. Uh, it, it is uh, a lot of people say, no, I don't have it. Well, go to your app library and look for it. And if for some reason you did delete it, uh, go into the app store and re-download it. Uh, 
and make use of this. Uh, uh, it is great for finding documents uh, that you have uh, stored on, you know, in any of the cloud drives, or if you have a Mac, right on your Mac. <clears throat> okay, next. Um, how many of us have had uh, group conversations uh, that um, we uh, we want to get out of, uh, or or now nah, let's say that that you know we're we're part of the group, but uh, you're in the middle of doing something and you're really not participating in that group conversation, uh, but you're getting dinged every time there is a uh, a, a text. And depending on how large the group is, that can be a um, uh, drive you, especially the, for those of you like me that have ADD, would drive you completely insane. So what can you do? Well, here is a group text, okay? Uh, and I can come to the top here. And what I can do is I will hit information and it then allows me to scroll down and uh, essentially to, uh, uh, you know, to uh, silence the call. It also allows me to, as you see, hide alerts. I can turn on hide alerts. Now I'm not being alerted during that. I can turn that off and on, but I'm not being alerted every time there's a text going back and forth. There's one other feature that I love, but unfortunately it only works as long as everyone in that conversation is, has an iPhone. There are a number of times where I'm included in a group text and I don't wanna be. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not part of it. They included me, uh, you know, and uh, I don't wanna be part of that conversation. Well, as you notice here, leave this conversation. You hit that and you're no longer part of that conversation. Again, if you've got that one or two people in the world with an Android phone that happen to join, they're screwing you up using this feature. But as long as everybody is using an iPhone, you can hit this and exit yourself from that call. Uh, a lot of times everybody knows about movement uh, or should about the app switcher. Okay, what is the app switcher? Well, I've got apps that are open. I uh, swipe up like this and I can scroll through all my open apps. Um, a lot of times people will go, yeah, but every time I try that, I can't move. Uh, well, there's another way to scroll through your apps, if you don't know, is the ability to um, move at the bottom. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna open this app up now. You see that line at the bottom of the screen? I can just go this way. I can go that way. And I can scroll through all of the apps um, uh, this way. Or of course I can push up and scroll through the apps like that. I find this to be really convenient when I'm going back and forth between two apps. Uh, I'm checking something in an email. Uh, that I want to uh, uh, maybe copy and paste into a browser. This is much simpler, much faster than this, okay? So basically what you're doing again is you have it open and you see that line at the bottom. And that uh, when you see that, you can swipe back and forth between, okay? Um, cycle more than any other nation. This is, for those of you world travelers, that uh, are going on a trip out of the country, but you can't speak that language, uh, but you'd like to maybe carry on a conversation. Apple included in this last update an incredibly amazing translate app. I'm going to open that up right here. I've got English Spanish, okay? So I'm gonna demo it. Excuse me, how do I get to the museum? And there it is right there. Okay. And it will play, it's not doing it here. There, there, there's the translation. 
So I continue with that. This, this really allows you to have a conversation um, you know, with, with a particular person. So I'm gonna say, uh, is it near here? And there you go. Uh, I've got the volume down so you can hear, but otherwise it would play that. So the other person, um, uh, you know, the, the person that I'm speaking uh, English to, uh, that's translating Spanish, this would actually, uh, this would actually play to them. Now, you could do the reverse. You would hit the Spanish, they would, uh, uh, they would answer you, and uh, it would come back um, with the English translation. You can go back and forth with this. It is amazingly accurate, and it is amazingly easy to use. This is the Translate app. Um, Again, this is something that you guys, you should all play with. It's got uh, um, any number of languages. I, every language that uh, uh, I think anybody would uh, uh, be interested in, in using. Uh, and you can enter several different languages. So that is the Apple Translate app. Um, we are coming to uh, basically uh, the end of uh, these tips and tricks. There are uh, a couple of more, but uh, um, I'll show one in uh, Safari um, that uh, I like a lot. Um, let's see, I'm gonna cancel this. Uh, open up a web page here. Um, uh, and uh, here's a guide for drone age. Okay. Um, what you can do, there are two little uh, tricks here. If you go up to the top, a lot of times you're looking at web pages and they have a ton of apps, right? And, you know, it, and it's just a pain to read through. What you can do is come up to the search bar at the top where you see the AA, tap on that, and then tap on show reader view. And what that will do is it will remove all of the ads from and the extraneous stuff from that web page, uh, making it much easier to read. So again, you come up here, you hit the double A, uh, uh, and it will um, uh, remove all of the extraneous stuff, ads and so forth. The other thing you can do um, is you can add it to your read later. You come down to that handy square with an arrow at the bottom and you scroll here and you basically would um, add to reading list, okay? I wanna add that to my reading list. Then when I wanna read it, I open up uh, Safari. I see the book, uh, the open page book there. And here are all the things that I've saved uh, for reading later. Um, I think we have come to the basic end of my tips and tricks. Uh, I hope that uh, these were uh, uh, things that you will find useful. Uh, and will use. I apologize for the technical glitches. Uh, back on uh, Backtap, I assure you, Backtap works and it's very cool. So with that, I guess, uh, I am kind of done unless there are a few questions that we can answer kind of quickly. Hey, let me uh, let me jump in. Maybe uh, we'll pop up a couple questions here real quick. Um, first one is: Is it true that the more windows you have open, the slower the phone will work? Yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, again, a pet peeve of mine on some of the old uh, older sessions uh, that we did, and I would walk up to some of the people, and you had uh, 150 apps open. Yeah, it. Uh, uh, at uh, you can keep 10, 11 apps, although that's kind of crazy, but you can, and it won't uh, affect the phone. Uh, but if you have, you know, the, depending on, if you have one of the newer phones, it will not slow it down, but it will affect your battery life. If you have an older phone, older, you know, if you're using a, uh, an iPhone uh, 8, 7 or 8, it's going to slow the phone down. If you're using one of the newer phones, it won't slow it, but it will affect your battery life. Very good. 
So th this might be a follow up one, but how are you able to put your phone on the Zoom screen to share with us? I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. Yeah. Um, I would like to take credit um, and say that I figured this out, but I'd be lying. I have to thank Victor. Uh, I apologize to Victor if he happens to be on the call because I, uh, uh, if his last name is a little harder to pronounce, but um, Victor is uh, a part-time resident who uh, is, uh, uh, has worked for Apple for over 30 years in production. And uh, he gave me the, uh, the clue. What I did was I connected my iPhone to the Mac. I guess you could do this also with, uh, uh, with a PC, but I connected it to the Mac, okay? I then opened up QuickTime and I hit record. And in that record, it gives me an option. What do I wanna record? Well, I hit iPhone. And that allowed me to bring up what you're seeing here in a Zoom session, okay? So quickly, connect phone to Mac, open up QuickTime, hit record, and hit your iPhone. Very good. There may be uh, two more here. Do all the editing tools work in any email? We're having a hard time finding it in Gmail. Yeah, it, it, um, it does not... Uh, in the Gmail app, it does not. Okay, uh, um, there, you know, and th this opens up something that I'll talk about just very quickly. Uh, there are a few ways you can access your email. Uh, many people access the email by going to on the web uh, to uh, uh, you know to Google and uh, Gmail. So they're actually accessing their email through the browser. Another way is uh, you can access it through a program. Uh, there is a Gmail app that uh, uh, Apple, uh, uh, that, that you can download for the iPhone. Uh, the third way is to use an aggregator, what I call an email aggregator, which is Apple Mail. Uh, Outlook is an email aggregator too. Uh, what the email aggregators do is they allow you to put several different accounts. So I'm gonna open up my Apple Mail here. Uh, let's uh, delete this draft. And you'll see that I have a very steeple Gmail and I have a G for G, that's another email account I have. I've set up those two as um, uh, basically as accounts. I could, I could basically in Apple Mail, I could uh, set up my Gmail account, a Yahoo account, an AOL account, my work account, and all I would uh, and all I would need do is open up Apple Mail, and I could access every one of those uh, um, uh, accounts. So to answer the question, though, if you're just using Gmail or the Gmail app, those editing tools would not be available. Very good. Uh, best backup. Best backup approach for uh, just storage. On your best, back, best backup? Yep. Um, how, do you, how do you back up your data on this? Okay. How you how do you back up? I guess I need to know how do you back up your data um, uh, on the iPhone, or uh, are we talking about storage in the cloud? That that I'm a little. I mean, to back up data settings, um, and we go to. Uh, uh, general, and then you go to iPhone storage. And then what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down. These are all the things that are stored. You're going to scroll down to basically, uh, um, you know, iPhone back. Actually, you don't have to scroll down here. Um, uh, we're going to do iPhone backup. Okay. Under, um, uh, you know, under iPhone storage, and you can do a backup now. Uh, that's where you want, there we go, okay? Uh, system, you're gonna do a, you, you're gonna want to back up um, uh, from the, basically from the backup app. Uh, and you wanna do backups um, 
you know, on a regular basis, you should do an automatic backup. Basically, uh, you could do that every uh, every evening. Now, I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Um, uh, you absolutely want to make sure that everything on that iPhone is backed up regularly. Uh, if it is, and you have any issue with the phone, uh, it uh, you know it it uh, you you lose it. Let's say you lose it. All of that data is stored in the cloud. It would not be able to be accessed by whoever found that phone, but it would allow you to get a new phone, go to that backup the last time you backed up uh, by logging into your Apple ID, and you could create uh, uh, everything you had on your old phone on the new one. So is that the, I, I guess, is that the backup that you were talking about? Um, yeah, I think I think I think close enough. We can we can do a follow up. Just as a reminder, this is going to be recorded, and made available to everybody on the uh, on the Three Amigos uh, YouTube site. More information. Appreciate it. When's the next one? So, well, let, let me a couple of things I do want to say before we we um, get off. Very quick. One to any of the Android users that tuned in today. Um, for what reason, I have no idea, but let's say you were dragged in by your uh, better half who has an iPhone. Uh, we are looking for someone. I think we might have someone. Mike Palmer's daughter might. Uh, uh, apparently, she uh, has a really good understanding of the Android system. We absolutely owe all of the Android users out there a similar session to this. And I apologize. We just haven't found anyone who was comfortable enough to, uh, or, or actually crazy enough to do one of these sessions. But I promise you, uh, um, you know, that we will. One other thing, and I promised Mikey Kugovich that I would bring it up, um, uh, the updates on your phone, the security updates. Uh, when you see that there is an update due on your phone, and that will always show on the uh, uh, on the settings app, you'll see a little icon like a one, a red one, letting you know that there's a, a, a an update. Absolutely, positively, make that update. Do that update. If you want to wait a week or so just to see if there, uh, you know, were, were, was anybody, uh, you know, any people have had issues, you could do that. But I would advocate not even doing that. Um, Many of these updates right now are security patches. And uh, in, in, in this day and age, uh, it has, um, uh, uh, it has, uh, it, it's crazy the, um, uh, the amount of hacking that has gone on. So I absolutely tell everyone, don't hesitate to do those updates. As a matter of fact, hesitate, absolutely do that. So, uh, any, any other, uh, oh, we will, uh, we will, you know, uh, the, the tech committee, um, will be scheduling. We're going to do again, our holiday gift guide as we always have. And, uh, we'll probably have one or two, maybe two other, uh, uh tech sessions. Uh, the other thing to do though, is be on the lookout. Uh, I would say in the next, uh, Maybe I'm speaking out of turn, and if I am DF, I apologize. Uh, but I would say within the next month or, uh, or less, uh, you'll be getting a notice about the tech forum, uh, invited to, to join the tech forum. That's where you can ask all these questions. Uh, um, you know, in, they, they, they can be Android questions because we'll have people, you know, there that, that will be able to answer those. Uh, it's it's going to be a collective experience. Everybody is going to be helping everybody else on this. So we're really excited about this. I think when all of you see this, you'll be excited too. I guess that's it, Wald, unless there's anything else. Uh, thanks so much for putting up with me. And uh, I uh, hope to see all of you down the road. That's a wrap. Thanks, Bear. Bye-bye, people. See ya. Great job. Thanks, Barry. Thank you. Thank you.